Okay, last part of this chapter talks about colligative properties, but let's see what is a colligative property. Those are the properties of the solutions, we're talking about solutions, right? That depend on the concentration of the solute molecules. So solute molecules, whatever you dissolve in a solvent, uh, has an effect on some of the properties of the liquid. One of them is vapor pressure, another one is boiling point, then the freezing point and the osmotic pressure. So let's talk about the vapor pressure lower first and then we take care of the rest of them. Vapor pressure lowering. So if we show the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, we P and a degree symbol on top, it shows for the pure solvent, the pure solvent vapor pressure. It's for, sure, sorry. It's for when there is no solute uh, is dissolved in solvent. But when you dissolve a solvent in the a solute in the solvent, you have some difference. So the total pressure of the solution, when you don't have, I'm sorry, I'm not writing that straight. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, when we don't have any solute the pressure of the entire solution only depends on mole fraction of solvent times the partial pressure of pure solvent. But uh, imagine that you just start adding some solute. So we said the vapor pressure goes down. So the delta P or change in the pressure of the solution will be the difference between the solution, the vapor pressure of pure solvent minus the pressure of solution. We say delta P, the change in the vapor pressure would be the difference between the partial pressure of the pure solvent, don't forget this is for pure solvent, and pressure of the solution. So this difference has been created by dissolving the solute. If, because I don't have enough space, I'll have to erase this part. So, if do you remember we said the pressure of solution or let me just explain this first. Um, just substituting from the previous formula that I erased. Now, I will get a factor with P star solvent. So it's going to be one minus X of solvent. And do you remember in the previous video I said X of solute plus X of solvent is equal to one. So X of solute, can I say it's one minus X of solvent? Yes. So can I say here instead of one point, one minus X of solvent, can I say this is solute. So the final equation, it would be X of solute, the star of solvent, which absolutely makes sense. We said the change in the partial pressure or change in the pressure of a solvent uh, will be in a solution, sorry, will be the amount of solute that you dissolve in it 
and this effect will be on the uh, pressure of the pure solvent. So this is the formula for vapor pressure lowering. It will be given in the in the exam. Also, you can. So some problems. Problem on page on uh, slide sixty-five. <clears throat> it's uh, talking about the eugenol, which is an organic compound, is a chief constituent of olive of clove. This pale yellow liquid dissolves in ethanol, so sol solute is eugenol and solvent is ethanol. Better write down the solute and solvent for ourselves. And solvent is ethanol. That's what the question is saying. It has a boiling point of 255 degrees Celsius. As a result, we know eugenol's vapor pressure is very low. It can be considered non-volatile. Uh, so it doesn't escape from our solvent. What is the vapor pressure lowering? In these types of questions, I want you to pay close attention to the wording. Vapor pressure lowering means to look for delta P. It doesn't say low, vapor pressure. It says vapor pressure lowering means look for delta P. What is a vapor pressure lowering at 20 degrees Celsius of a solution containing 8.56 grams of eugenol? in uh, 50 grams of ethanol. The vapor pressure of pure ethanol is at 20 uh, degrees Celsius is 44.6 millimeters of mercury. So in order to solve it, uh, you had this formula. Delta P is going to be, you want me to go back. Delta P is uh, going to be X of, X of uh, solute, sorry. X of solute times, Vapor pressure of pure solvent. On the PowerPoint slide, you have it as solvent. This is not correct. Change it to solute. There is a typo. All right, so means that you need to find a mole fraction of solute. In, in order to find a mole fraction of solute, you need to find the mole moles of uh, solute and solvent. So moles of solute, which is eugenol, using its formula to calculate the, mol the molar mass, is you have 8.56 grams and in one mole you were given the formula for eugenol so it's 164.22 grams it will give you 0 0.0521 moles of your solute because we need the mole fraction we need to uh, find the moles of solvent also ethanol uh, how many uh, grams do you have? 50. 50 grams of ethanol. Ethanol, lose its molar mass, it's 46 point, almost 0 0.08 grams. So the number of moles is going to be 1.085. I'm just copying the PowerPoint slides answers to save the time. Make sure you do the calculations and double check. All right, so the total number of moles is going to be 0 0.0521 plus 1.085, which is going to be how many? 0 0.04581 moles. Then 
for molar uh, for the mole fraction of solute you have moles of solute which is 0 0.0521 moles divided by 0 0.04581 moles then mole fraction of a solute is going to be 0 0.04581 Seems like I made a mistake. Sorry. Yeah. This 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 is one point one three seven. I'm sorry. I just read it wrong. All right. So at the end you will have this as a mole fraction, and delta p is x of solute, which is point zero four five eight times the pressure of pure solvent which is 44.6 millimeters of mercury so delta p will be 2.04 millimeters of mercury it means the vapor pressure will be lowered down 2.04 millimeters of mercury lower than 44.6 it will be about like 41.96 uh, and if you want to know the uh, reason for this lowering the the vapor pressure is that uh, what do we say the vapor pressure the when the molecules of liquid can escape from liquid to the gas phase when you dissolve a solute in your solvent in your solution the surface of the liquid is not all going to be the solvent molecules. You have some solute molecules that are uh, interacting with the solvent in uh, forming the intermolecular forces. So basically, the solute molecules keep the solvent molecules busy and don't let them to evaporate that easy. So this was the first uh, colligative property. And uh, after this uh, example on your powerpoint slides you see the non-volatile and volatile solute a non-volatile solute it has no uh, in, uh no like um uh, high let's say vapor pressure itself so uh, you can just concentrate on the solvent so when you have a volatile uh, solute then the story is different but here we assume that all the solvent solutes are uh, non-volatile so you can ignore the uh, the pressure of the solute itself we just focus on the solvent as you see here the focus is just on the pressure of solvent the second uh, the second uh, colligative property, the second or third, let's say, they are uh, boiling point elevation. And the freezing point depression. So, effect of solute is on boiling point. It elevates the boiling point of a, sol a solvent. You can easily do it in the kitchen when you are cooking, with, when you try co to cook or just boil some water. Go ahead and uh, try to boil some water without adding anything to it. And then go ahead and uh, add some uh, salt or sugar to, to the pot of water and try to heat them at the same time and see which one uh, starts boiling faster. It's absolutely uh, safe, you can do it in the kitchen and uh, I'm sure those of you who cook, uh, who have, uh, you have experienced it. So two different pots, one with the same amount of water with, with uh, salt and without salt or with sugar and without sugar and see which one is going to boil uh, earlier. Uh, the formula for this uh, uh, property is, let me touch on it again, 
the formula for a boiling point uh, ele uh, elevation, which will be given in the exam, is delta Tb, the change or the boiling point uh, elevation. Tb is boiling temperature, is m times Kb. So delta Tb is boiling point elevation, which is T minus T of pure solvent. Kind of like what you had on the learning what vapor pressure. M is molality. You had it. And KB is boiling point boiling point Similar to that, you can uh, say about the freezing point depression, delta Tf, depression in or lowering the uh, temperature of the freezing for a solvent depends on molality times freezing point depression constant. You use this uh, property when you add, maybe not in Houston, but uh, when you add the uh, the antifreeze agent to your car radiators so the water doesn't freeze that fast uh, you have a, a, a good uh, example on page 72 or uh, I keep saying page I mean the slide 72 of This chapter 72. A solution is made up of eugenol, the same uh, compound, in diethyl ether. So you have solute again, eugenol, and solvent is <coughs> diethyl ether. The formula is given. If the solution is 0.575 molal, 0.575 molal, so molality is given, in ether, what are the freezing point and boiling point of the solution? What is the boiling point and freezing point of the solution? The freezing point and boiling point of pure ether, the freezing point for pure ether is minus 116.3 degrees Celsius and for boiling point is given as 34.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, freezing point depression constant Kf is given as 1.79 degrees Celsius per molal and for boiling is given as 2.02 .02 degrees Celsius per, uh, per molar, per molar, I'm sorry. So we are supposed to find the, the freezing uh, point and boiling point. So for freezing point, we know that delta Tf is MKF. So we can find the delta Tf first. Delta Tf is, molality is 0.575 molar times Kf is given here, 1.79 molar degree Celsius per molar. So we can cancel molar and molar. So Delta Tf is how much? 1.03 degrees Celsius. So that's the change, that's this freezing point depression. But we need Tf, so Tf is minus 116.3, is it three, yes, minus 1.03 degrees Celsius, which is minus 
three degrees Celsius. Okay, so the, this was for the pure solvent. And you see by adding the solute, it even went down 1.03 degrees Celsius. The same uh, thing for delta TB is MKB. So delta TB is molality is the same, 575 molal times KB is 34.6 degrees Celsius. So delta TB is going to be 1.116. So by dissolving eugenol in diethyl ether, the boiling point is going to go up 1.116. So TB is the temperature of pure solvent, 30 I guess I made a mistake here again. The, the temp, the KB, the KB, I should have used KB, I'm sorry. Just, I'm just trying to save time and it's not good. So TB is 34.6 because it's elevation, so you need to add it, 1.116. So it's going to be 35.8 degrees Celsius is even 1.116 degrees Celsius higher. So that's how you deal with uh, these types of problems as far as the plugging to the formulas. The, so you can work on the rest of the examples and uh, you have an idea of, of how to work with them. The last uh, colligative property that you will be working with uh, is osmosis. Osmosis. We all have experienced uh, some sort of osmosis in our life. Uh, is the phenomenon, uh, the osmosis is the phenomenon, is the, um, is what we say solvent flows through a semi-permeable membrane to equalize the solute concentration on both sides of the membrane. So let's say you have a semi-permeable permeable, uh, membrane, it's, uh, it allows some of the, only the solvent mo molecules to flow, only some of them to flow to the other side to make an equilibrium, to equalize the number of solvent molecules. So solute does not move. It's just a solute molecule that, uh, solvent molecule that flows. And you see it in, uh, when you add too much uh, salt to to the um, uh, let's say spinach or uh, lettuce then after a few days you will see they all uh, have shrunk and they have lost their water so that's because of the osmosis for the osmosis the formula is pi equal mrt Pi is osmotic pressure. What was capital M? Molarity. This time you talk about molarity. R is R constant, gas constant. And T is temperature in Kelvin. So, let's work on uh, slide 85. It's about dextrin, a polymer of glucose units is produced by bacteria growing in super solutions. Solutions of dextrin in water have been used as a blood plasma substitute at 21 degrees Celsius. What is the osmotic pressure in mmHg, millimeters of mercury, uh, of a solution containing 1.50 grams of aqueous solution 
if the average molecular mass of dextrin is 4 times 10 to the 8 atomic mass unit. So tell me, for this formula, what do you need to have? You need to have molarity, or uh, is all this given, and you know it already, and T must be calculated in Kelvin. So go ahead and uh, add the temperature to 273. It's going to give you 200. 94 Kelvin. Go ahead and find the molarity. For molarity, you need the moles per liter. So moles per liter, you can say one mole, the molar mass is given four times 10 to the eight. You can say grams. So it will give you 3.75 times 10 to negative 9 moles and mass and the liters of solution is how much did we have uh, 100 milliliters 100 milliliters molarity is 3.75 times 10 to negative 9 mole plus 100 milliliters times 10 to negative 3 change it to liters. We're, we change the milliliter to liter. We need to multiply by 10 to negative three. These are what you had in Chem 1. So the molarity of, uh, of this solution is going to be 3.75 times 10 to negative eight molar. Then go ahead and plug it into the formula. <clears throat> Pi is m 3.75 times 10 to the 8 molar times r is the same as what you had in gas chapters in uh, chem 1. 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole kelvin and t you calculated it is 294 kelvin. So when you do the math. <clears throat> Don't forget, you will get the pressure in atmosphere, which is 9.05 times 10 to negative 7 atmosphere. And in the question, if you remember, it was asking for the pressure in millimeters of mercury. The the convention, uh, conversion will be given when atmosphere is 760 mmHg. So uh, pi or osmotic pressure is going to be 6.9 times 10 to negative 4 millimeters of mercury. All right. You can work on the next example. The very last thing in the colligative properties, the very last part, and uh, the difference with, with what we had so far is that we didn't talk about the number of particles in the previous examples of colligative properties. So, but it depends on what your solute is. If your solute is an ionic compound, If your solute is an ionic compound and provides ions, which we show in I, you need to take, a, take the number of ions into the consideration. For example, NaCl will dissolve into Na and Cl. So I is two, one and one. If you have calcium chloride, it will give one calcium plus two chloride. So what would be I? I'm sure you would say one plus two, three. I'm not gonna, I don't want you to think I'm drawing a fraction. One, and this is also one. So you would say three. So just go ahead and calculate the number of ions from the formula and 
modify the formulas of colligative properties if you are dealing with an ionic compound. Or let's just say X of solute over P of solvent, the same way that you had. The same thing for delta TF. You would include an I here. I, K, F, M. For delta TB, the same. I, K, B, M. And uh, for a smaller pressure, I, M, R, T. That's what you need to be careful about. And the very last uh, example in this chapter is talking about that. So, what is the osmotic pressure at 25 degrees Celsius of an isotonic saline solution, a solution having an osmotic pressure equal to that of blood that contains 0.9 grams of NaCl in 100 milliliters of aqueous solution. Assume that I has the ideal value based on the formula. So we are talking about NaCl. For NaCl, what is I? One sodium, one chlorine. So I is two. What was the formula for uh, osmotic pressure is MRT. You're dealing with an ionic compound, so say I MRT. You need the molarity, but the, before anything else, let's add 273 to, to, to 85 degrees Celsius. It would be 298 Kelvin. We took care of this. We have R, we need to find the molarity of the solution. So uh, moles of solute is going to be one mole of NaCl is 58.44 grams. It's going to give you 0 0.01540 moles. And it's going to be, uh, you need to change the milliliter to liter. So it's going to be times 10 to negative three liter. So molarity is going to be 0 0.01540 moles per 100 times 10 to negative 3 liters. So molarity is going to be 0 0.1540 moles per liter. Now go ahead and plug them in. I is 2, molarity is 0.15 for zero moles per liter. R is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And, oops, and the temperature is, you just calculated it, 298 Kelvin. So pi or osmotic pressure is going to be the value will be 7.53 atmosphere. If the pressure is asking in the millimeters of mercury, then feel free to change it. All right, we are done with this chapter. Plenty of practices. Pause the video whenever you need to. And uh, feel free to ask me the questions.